All right, here we go. Starting recording. Take Street Wrestling Podcast here, coming to you on March, I think it's 18th, I think. Is it 18th? 2021? On a line? Mike Veneer, who's writing some shit down on the side. Joe Lopez looks like a fucking robot with his fucking glasses on. Fellas, what's good? What's up? What's up? Oh, you know, Bob, we had a baby, eats a boy. <laughs> Today's going to be a fun show. I can't wait for the show. Uh, as always, this podcast you can find on all podcast catchers, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, you name it. Uh, f- fun show today. No. We're about to, we're gonna, uh, huh? Are we really on Amazon Music? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I don't fuck around, dude. Come on now. I don't fuck right. around. Let's go. Hold on. Uh, I gotta anyway, see. I, I, so, I gotta I gotta show what this show is sponsored by. Hold on, I gotta get up and grab it real quick. Hold on. Oh, as I knock everything over. Yeah. Sponsored by Saturday night's main event. Yeah. Which which by the way, only ten episodes are right now on an on Peacock. And none of them from the from the glory years. That's ten, 10 of them. Expected on launch day. So that's true. That's true. But my spoiled ass wants 1987. Right actually, don't complain. I'm bitching. There's ten. Did you did you just say that there was ten more on the cock? Ten yes. more on the cock. Yes. Today's show is sponsored by Little People, Tips. Randy Macho Man Savage, and the Ultimate Warrior Pack. That's just that's just SummerSlam '92 main event. Oh, cool main event. Uh, Comes comes in a cool box. I know the glare is horrific on this box, so I'm trying to show it at an angle that you don't see the glare like for my ring light. Like that. So yeah, comes in a really cool box. Available at Walmart, nine ninety nine. For any of you fans out there that like uh, Hogan and Warrior enough to add that to your collection. Okay, cool. Anyway, so today's show we're gonna book a AW pay per view that's not even gonna happen for another two months. We continue our all time tag team bracket. Uh, and but first, before we get started, Mike, yeah, you was up last week's show. Okay, I threw some strongly worded opinions at the wall about some AEW stuff that we're gonna get to. Joe decided to make it his topic because he thought it'd be fun. So, you're not gonna hear my card to start the show like I promised because we're making it a topic. But there is some breaking news from some of us here at the Take Your Wrestling Podcast. For those of you that know today. Kind of an important day. WrestleMania tickets went on sale. Supposed to be Tuesday. Didn't go on sale Tuesday. Went on sale today. You know, did a pre-sale. Oh, nice cup. Myself and Joseph Lopez were very lucky today to score some premium seats for a two-night combo with the hope of hitting a Grand Slam tomorrow. Um, So, I just want you to know, Take Your Wrestling Podcast will be at Raymond James Stadium, both nights, uh, hard cam side. So you, you might see you might see a little bit of us. Possibly, we're there. I'm not going to tell you the section. I'm not going to tell you the seats because if we hit the home run tomorrow, next week's show we'll probably be announcing that on the show. So yeah, we're tune in to find out next Thursday. Come back for more. We'll tell you what section we're in. <laughs> We're actually, we're not going to tell you our actual section. We're going to tell you one section over so that you don't try to say hello to us. Oh, wow. You can't sit with us. No. no. <laughs> like, literally, they're only selling tickets by the two, so. Well, folks, it's just simple. The streak continues for you guys as well. Yeah. Let me straight. No, Let me straight. Going to both nights, which I'm happy about, so. Right. I mean, we don't yeah, count last year for reasons, but, you know. So last, so it was funny. We actually, Joe actually called me, and I was just waking up, and he was like, "All right, get into the uh, instant queue with me." So we both had our phones open, and for some reason, I thought Joe got in before me, but I don't know if I did. But so somehow, randomly, I had like fifty-seven people in front of me when it launched at ten. Joe had like two thousand plus in front of him. Yeah, Florida. So no, I don't even think it was that. I, I luck boxed and hit those tickets, and I was like, "Yup, bought the tickets that we got. Got in for both nights. We're super excited about that." So then, me and Joe were like, "You know what? Let's open up the individual days separately." 
He took a day. I took a day. We sat in the virtual queues or whatever. I was milliseconds away from getting us hard camera row one. Front really? row tickets. I was milliseconds away. And I they, hit the I yeah. I hit I hit the put in my cart transaction. Me and him, b- both of our stomachs dropped. Yeah. And literally it was spinning. And I was like, oh shit, we're about to announce we got front row seats for one night of WrestleMania on the show tonight. And the customer beat me to it. <laughs> so I was like, Ooh, customers. Try tomorrow. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but if if we don't get them, we got we got pretty decent seats already that we'll t- we'll stick with. And if we right. get lucky, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, I'm excited. It it would it would certainly be a childhood dream to sit in the very front row of WrestleMania. I've been going to WrestleMania since uh, I was 10 years old, and I went to WrestleMania 10. So I'm like, like this is technically my number 11 WrestleMania, but but yes. 10 Mike, and this counts as the streak because last year doesn't count as a loss. As so you far did, as ma- so you did Mania. So Joe, you did Mania 10. Yeah, and yeah. Did, and then the streak started at Mania what 20, 24, 25? Seven. We've been going uh, since 27. 27. 27. Okay. Atlanta. Yeah. We okay. we saw we saw edges. Thoughtful last match at WrestleMania whenever he fought Del Rio. And we're going to see his second WrestleMania match back when he takes on Roman on one of those nights. Likely in a, in a full title. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. That's a good segue. Let's get the fast lane, you know, because yeah, we have a new champion. Yeah. Fast lane, room, beep, beep. Let's are, go. Are there more than like two matches on this card? Yeah. There are actually five matches on the card and in league, t- technically. Really, four matches because I don't think one of these matches is going to really be a match once all said and done. But that's just my opinion. There was there was supposed to be a Shane and uh, Braun Strowman match that got canceled. Uh, don't know that, but yeah, no, that that's that's definitely been the word cycling. Is that that match was supposed to happen at Fastlane? That tells me that something from the WrestleMania card isn't getting to where they want it to, and it might be that text that I sent you earlier, Joe. Yeah, about that tweet from a certain person, which we can talk about during this fast lane discussion. Yeah, yeah, because um, we'll okay. obviously lead to where we're where we think the mania card's going to shape up after we go through. Right. Fashion. So let's get right. let's get to the fast lane. Okay, preview, right and then we'll talk about that at the back. So end. let's kick it off right now. Intercontinental Championship on the line between the champ Big E versus now the now new heel Apollo Cruz. Hmm. Um. I can see it going either way. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I can see it going either way. Like, I, I could see there being a lot of value in putting the title on a, a heel Apollo Cruz. And obviously, it would be, look, I both Mike and I can tell you this. I don't know if you'll be surprised by this, Ernest, or not, but Apollo Cruz was kind of huge on the indie scene about a decade ago. He was, his name was Ua Nation. He was one Ooh. of the. I heard about yeah. that, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, you know, we've been fans of his for a long time. He's one of those guys who you saw him and you were like, wow, this guy's going to be gigantic. He signed with WWE and has kind of done nothing for, I feel like, the better part of, what, five years at this point? I think he's been in there for a hot minute. So it's cool to finally see him getting pushed, and it'd be awesome to see him win the belt. However, I genuinely think he's not in a position where if he loses that he's going to be that harmed. I think as long as if he loses, that he gets, you know, he gets some sort of revenge either right after the match or maybe a week later on SmackDown, he gets to give a beatdown or something. There's a way to keep it going without having Apollo necessarily have to win here. So I'm actually going to, like, if we're doing pickums here, I'm, I'm going to say Big E's probably going to win. But I, I wouldn't be angry at all at Apollo winning. Uh, yeah, I see where you're going with this one, Joe, and I think this is going to extend probably a little bit more into the Mania build. Um, well, especially, I, especially with two nights of WrestleMania, like, the Intercontinental title's getting defended on there somewhere. It's either going to be on a ladder match with 18 people, or maybe Big E versus Apollo take two, you know? Uh, I'm actually going to lean towards it's going to be E versus Apollo two with some kind of stipulation. Um, okay. I see Apollo losing this match potentially by disqualification. Steps get involved again, tries to hurt something, tries to do something, leading to a final blow off at Mania between the two of them. Where then I think that Apollo wins the title and then E could potentially move into the title picture. 
depending on who walks out of uh, WrestleMania as the champion. Um, so that being said, I'm going to take uh, Eda win with some shenanigans uh, leading to uh, Apollo maybe getting the title on the grandest stage. Yeah, we're all on the same page. Yeah. I, I, when I saw this, match, when I saw this uh, list, I was like, yeah, I see a Gaga here going on this match. Biggie retains, extend this to Mania in a couple weeks. Yeah. And then the world's your oyster at that point. It's, I mean, it's an easy plug in to Mania. It, you're going to have to fill six to seven matches each night. And yeah. then you're going to have a prop. You're probably gonna have a pre-show match each night too. Um, something for the network for Peacock. Um, so my guess is you're gonna have probably seven to eight matches each night. So you're gonna have to find some space fillers. You know, obviously I think Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman got pushed so that because of you know potential reasons to have another match on a WrestleMania card. Um, not necessarily that we need to see Shane McMahon get thrown by a seven foot guy when we watch him jump off a hell in the cell every time he's on a fucking show. But I digress. We're gonna get Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman. You know, one thing I'll say, I feel like Fastlane is such a mistake to have as a show. And I get why they're doing it. I get why they've done it in the past. I get why they're doing it this year. Obviously, it's not, look, they're not selling tickets to this. This isn't about making more money. This is about giving Peacock its first. Peacock, man. Right. Like, I said, like, look, you couldn't have the network debut on Peacock and then not have the first big live show for, like, three weeks. You had to give them something ASAP. It's literally happening the first weekend that it's a thing on Peacock. So I understand why Fastlane is happening. But at the end of the day, Fastlane, I feel like, is going to be basically an overglorified episode of SmackDown. Hopefully not an overglorified episode of Raw, because I, I don't want to sit there and watch an overglorified episode of Raw. I'd rather watch an overflow glorified episode of SmackDown. Right. But I, I, I feel like that's like this whole show, it feels almost pointless because especially in a year where you have two nights worth of WrestleMania card to fill, like what matches are you putting on these shows that you're not either having some kind of screwy shenanigans to get to WrestleMania or like you're, you're, you're robbing us of something that would have made more sense at WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns is going to be fun. And I don't, you know, the rest of the card, we'll talk about it, but I don't know. I just feel like this is a weird one. This is a weird place to have this card this year. This is a, this is a John Laurinaitis built raw super show. Um, where yeah. he literally just sits there and just books like random matches together. And it's one of those where it, like, it comes off. Like, obviously this is the test run. This is them. Yes. Seeing if Peacock can hold the the bandwidth to not lose WrestleMania, because the problem is, is you lose WrestleMania at this point to the people that can't be there um, through Peacock. People are gonna riot. Um, yeah. it's bad enough that you got people canceling subscriptions because you know uh, you're not booking someone that they like. Now let them lose WrestleMania in a in a big moment like this. It's just gonna get worse. I mean, um, got- so it's obvious. You've even gotten, I'm sorry to interrupt you, you've even got oh. people at this point not subscribing to Peacock or canceling their subscription because it doesn't have all the content that they wanted. Like, I know you were just joking around earlier, Ernest, about like, oh, they only got 10 episodes of this. But I was reading online today. I was looking at Facebook today. I was looking at Reddit. There are legitimately people who are like, they don't have every episode of Nitro already. Fuck these guys. I'm never subscribing again. And some ECW stuff, too. There's a, there's a thread, actually. I, mean, I was going to tag you guys, and I remember, uh, Joe, you don't have Twitter, so you can't tag you in shit. <laughs> but there's, like, have... there's a guy who created tag. a thread. I don't want to tag. No, no. But what is... <laughs> I'm a single <laughs> star. But Adam Cole, there's... baby. That's true. Not there's Kyle a... O'Reilly. But... Baby. No, but there was a but there was a, a thread that some guy wrestled something whatever on on Twitter or just had him today. Yeah. Who literally did a up to date thread of what they were what they were adding in real time. Oh really? And, and I and I kept retweeting him because I was like <laughs> I was just trolling the shit out of him. It was like Saturday main event, only ten episodes. I was like, that fucking shit pisses me off. And then <laughs> they, they have WrestleMania, but missing WrestleMania five, six, uh, seven, twelve, thirty one. And then, then he said, "Oh, update WrestleMania six is up there now." And what a fuck is five? My favorite, you know. But whatever. Um, yeah. The, the, the and we knew this when the word go. Right. The main priority here is make sure the cock works. And that's, that's always the main priority. Yeah. To be clear. Yeah. It's like, baby. oh yes, there we go. It's nice. Adam Cole and the baby. Bring, bring it closer. Bring it a little closer. It's a little fuzzy. Bring it a little closer. <laughs> 
See a little bit better there, yeah. All right, this is what a YouTube. This is what Adam a Cole and the Babies. This is from Up Up Down Down. Adam <laughs> like Cole the is the lead singer. It's got Cesaro, Woods, and Breeze. Um, and then of course on the back you have the Adam Cole and the Babies tag. Uh, fun note: if you do not watch Xavier Woods's Up Up Down Down channel, um, watch their Uno series. It's hilarious. They have made the tags an admit one ticket to see Adam Cole and the Bebe's. <laughs> if you see any of the four of them and you have one of these, they'll sign it for you. If you see all four of them together, you can give them your <laughs> ticket and they will use their, they'll do their uh, signature catchphrase from the Uno show and you can record and be in the video with them. So it's a, it's a fun little uh, gag gift. So you know, oh. if you ever see Cesaro, you know, we could always be like, hey, bud, I got an ad at one second. You want to sign this for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Next next match here. The Women's yeah. Tag Team Championship on the line. Uh, once again, a rematch from Why? the last pay-per-view. Elimination. Why? Why what? Why is there a women's tag title match on this show? Well, you, Why? Um, you tell Vince. Ask Vince. Trash. Nia Jax, Gina Baszler versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair once again. Doesn't Carmella have a new Simoleon or something she could be tagging with that th this would make more sense? Because obviously the champs are going to retain. This is stupid. Move yeah. on. Yeah, like, here's my thing, right? I don't hate it because I think it's going to be a fun match. I, I like the teams. I even like the whole challenger and champion being a team. And if this, was, if this wasn't a year where there's two nights of WrestleMania, I almost think that smart money would be on Sasha and Bianca winning because WWE loves doing that. Like just as much as the Oscars love awarding people for doing biopics, WWE yeah. loves having opponents as tag team champions together. I don't know why, but it's a thing. But this not is, this, this is oldest day for WWE, actually. But, but not this year because you have two nights of WrestleMania. You got to have the women's titles defended on one of them. So you got to have the champions not fighting each other on one of the nights. So I think Shayna and Paul are winning. Hold on. You may have made an argument for me to change said mind. Okay. Night one, the new women's tag team champions face each other in an honorable contest for the SmackDown women's title. Oh, I like where you're going with this. Night two, you have Asuka defend the title. And also in night two, you have the women's tag team champions defend their tag titles in a match against, say, the, 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 the people they take well, the title from. Yeah. Billy K Billy K and Natty or Natty and Tamina or you can make it a five team eliminator if you really right. want to. You're gonna need to fill time. Give me the riot squad, give me uh I, Peyton Royce, give I me guess where you're going. Are you going with they have their like honorable fight the night before? Sasha wins, Bianca wins, doesn't matter. I mean it matters, but it doesn't matter. They shake hands, they hug, yada yada yada. Next night. One of them's turning on the other, costing them to lose the tag titles. You've got your new number one heel on the women's SmackDown roster, and you've got your number one face in whoever the champion is. Literally works for either or. You can have Sasha turn heel. You can have Bianca turn heel. Literally works. I I never would have thought of that, and I love it. Ding dong. That's exactly where I was going. Good idea. I thought it happens, though. Oh, honestly, if it happens, that doubt would be... Doubt it, too. Oh, I, I wholeheartedly doubt it. But if you're looking for something, again... You're going to have 16 probably plus matches on this show. Yeah. You're going to have to find a way to fill time. You're not bringing a guy like Triple H in for a match because if you did, you would have already started the build. Yeah. You're going to get you're going to get Shane, cool, cool story. You're not getting a soul from NXT cuz they're doing two nights. Yeah. Three nights before it, the show. Sucks, there's no man. there's no Finn, there's no Cross, there's none of those guys. You're going to have Bad Bunny on a, on a night with Priest against Miz and Morrison, cool story, yep. bro. Um, there is very thin line here. Let's let's go over this and, and and we can kind of give a. I mean, it's a it's going to be a seventeen match card. So Serpentico will be on there. Luther will be wrestling against uh, Top Flight. Uh, I think, I, you know what? We dark. Might... That's not WrestleMania. Dark. That's AEW Dark. Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong seventeen card in the show. I'm sorry. Sure. You, know, you, you know you know what we might get on that show. The NXT Cruiserweight Champion Jordan Devlin versus the NXT Cruiserweight Champion uh, Santos Escobar. I would, I would so be in for that. I would love that much more But that, I think that's going to happen. That happen at Stand and Deliver. So that's in my eyes. I think y'all will agree to champs retain. Uh, yeah, I uh, think 
going to retain too. But I would love them to okay, fucking I want Bianca, let's go, go Bianca for Bianca. it. Yeah, yeah like, like do it. it. All right. Happen Next but match here, we got Randy Orton versus Alexa Bliss. This shit ain't happening. The Fiend's Cinematic. Back. Cinematic, dog. Let's Cinematic. Go. The Fiend is back somehow, some way. Well, yes. No, no, no. Look, I think we all know that the match, whatever it is, whether it's cinematic or somehow they tried to do it in the ring, whatever happens, it's ending with the Fiend standing over Randy Orton's body, <laughs> making the WrestleMania match very clearly. Like, look, look we, we know they're going there. My only hope is that it's better than the last time Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton had a match at WrestleMania. Because the sad thing is, back then, that storyline was fucking awesome, too. But it, the match sucked. So I really hope that this time, the match doesn't suck. Wasn't that Orlando? Yeah, no, we were there with the fucking bugs on the ring and shit. That like, was, I, but that was, Orla- that was Orlando, right? It was 2017, I, right? Yeah. I believe so. Okay, so that mania, we sat in the second deck. That was the seats that you thought basically yes. kind of got yeah, to yeah. And that also was the night that the fucking Roman Undertaker shit hit the fan. Yeah. So not only did we get a shit Roman Undertaker match, we got a match where they teleported bugs onto the mat. Like, what the fuck that was doing? like one of those matches that you went into that show being like, this is going to be incredible. Because that storyline up until that point was awesome. And Orton's a great wrestler. Wyatt's a really good act. Like, I was so into that. And then projected bugs as like green screen on the mat. It, like, one of the worst things that WWE has done in a while and, like, they've done some pretty awful things. They they had Shane McMahon cover Braun Strowman with green paint the other day. Like, they, 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 they know where, how to where, where do they even get that much green paint to put under a wrestling ring? I don't, I don't uh, get it. Nickelodeon, they actually, they got it. It was just gack. Slime RS. Uh, that being said, I got Alexa for obvious reasons because if you get involved in whatever. Just cause. I just got no contest. Like, Whatever. I, got, I mean, I, I got, if, if, I got if, if, there it even a match. I got there will right. be a bell ring. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, okay, I don't think. Wait, wait, wait. Better question. Better question. Let's not even do a pick em for who wins Alexa versus Orton. Does Orton hit her with an RKO? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say yes for that too. Cool. Okay. Next match. This is a really riveting card here. This is a busy uh, or go for Raw slash SmackDown. It really is, though. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a Raw Super Show. I just said it. But I will oh. say this. It's not a terrible card, though. This is not a pay-per-view card, that's all. Um, no, Drew McIntyre. What's that? It's a Raw card. Yeah. It's a great Raw card. <laughs> not, not, not so much for pay-per-view, but anyway. Okay. Former Raw. WWE Champion uh, Drew McIntyre against Sheamus. <sighs> now, okay. Oh. Okay. Here's my thing. For the sake of storytelling, and maybe I can see the argument being that people would say, oh, the result would be too obvious. But for the sake of storytelling, why wasn't this match like winner gets to fight the world champion at WrestleMania? Why did we go ahead and just announce on Monday, hey, Drew's getting the title shot, and he's got to have this throwaway match with Sheamus. Also, why the hell did they announce on Twitter beforehand? Just randomly on Twitter, just cause. The, re- the reason why they the reason why they announced that match is because they were also announcing that night that tickets were getting pushed back three days. Right. They 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 counterfired the shit storm that they were getting ready to ensue by announcing a main event match for one of the nights to try to hopefully like, hey, sorry, we're pushing it back a couple days. Here's one of your main events. Now you know what the two main events are. Also, are we not sure that we may not may get it may may not get a three way uh Triple threat match with Sheamus involved at Rainier? I, I no. if I had to guess, I would think that we're more likely to get Sheamus winning here if he were to win here, which I don't think he's going to. I think Drew's gonna win. I'm making that my official pick. But if Sheamus does win, I think we're more likely to get on night one Sheamus versus Drew again. And if he wins again, he gets into the match on night two, and there's no way that he wins that match. Because I don't think that we're getting anything but Drew versus Lashley. One-on-one, main event, night two of Mania probably. Or night one. You know the funny thing is? They really, like, Edge and Roman as a main event on one of the nights. Like, that could be either night. There's no weaker main event there, in my opinion. Those are pretty equal in how excited I am to see both of those. So you can have either one. But if you're going for story... I don't know how much that they're going to go for guys wrestling on both nights. Like, 
it's it's two different nights. I think you can get away with it in certain degrees as long as it makes sense. Like I'm not I'm not going to be mad at Drew and Sheamus wrestling on night one if there's a payoff to it for night two. Even if the payoff is that Sheamus didn't get what he wanted, that's still a payoff. But I don't know that they're going to do that. I, I, there might be a chance that everyone works either night one or night two. I think last year that's how it was. But last year they also had a lot more restrictions because COVID was brand new. I don't know what the restrictions are this year. So I don't know. We'll see. There are none. This is I Florida. Mean, Florida. Yeah. Well, no, in Florida, Joe. I mean, I mean, WWE did put out a safety protocol thing uh, shortly after tickets were released that I sent Joe a screenshot of. Um I don't know if it's Florida that's forcing them to do this or if this is like WWE mixed with the the news from Tampa. But I mean, they're actually being very proactive with uh, a lot of the stuff that they've said that you like can and can't do um, and stuff like that. I'm trying to find it real quick. Uh, I'm surprised like that they're still doing the whole pod thing, because to be honest, when they announced the other day that tickets were no longer going to be on sale when they originally said they were going to be on sale. I figured that the easy explanation was that they had just gotten a wind of the UFC deciding that they were going to sell out an entire building, no social distancing, no yada, yada, yada. Way to go, Dana White. Real, real, real good job, you asshole. Um, I, I was afraid that that's what this was going to end up being, that Vince McMahon was going to be like, hey, it's Florida. They said we could sell every ticket. Let's sell every ticket. Yeah, Today let's, we let's... discovered that's not the case because we can only buy tickets in either two, four, or six. That's why we only bought like the two tickets, you know, because it was just like, okay, well, there ain't no room for you know anyone else at that point. And they're doing we it actually stuff. We actually got really worried because at like nine thirty, I got on and I saw like there was a notification. I was like, you have to buy all the tickets in the pods. So me and Joe immediately went. We were like, fuck, we're gonna have to buy six tickets. Right, it was, up, it was up right. to six per pot. So that we were literally really like where we were sitting, also exactly. But they didn't end up being that. Yeah, but we literally almost puked when we were like, "Oh, we had to buy six fucking tickets." I'm like, "This is gonna, gonna suck." Puke. Like I have, I, I have a feeling there's a real chance that like Mike and it's gonna be like Mike and I, and then for the first time that I can recall at any WrestleMania, like five empty seats, and then the next set of people. You yeah, know? we're not going to have a 300-pound guy trying to sit in my lap after the show. Do you remember? Talk about, that happened before? Dude, talk about <laughs> a pre-COVID world. WrestleMania 30 in fucking New Orleans, when trying to get into the building to get to your seat, you were literally nose-to-nose -nose with the other person. You could tell if the guy in front of you was circumcised or not. That's how up on top of each other you were just trying to get to your seats. Another, that another, is not going to happen this year because, like, COVID is not a thing anymore in this world. I'll I'll tell you this much. The first time that they did the Superdome was an absolute shit show. It was, like, if a fire broke out, we would not be here right now it on was, this podcast. It was a 35-minute standstill dick-to-ass line to try to get to your fucking seats. And if you walked into the wrong gate like we did... We had to walk around the entire building to get to our seats. I think we walked in and it took us an hour to get to our seats. We almost yeah. missed, like, the opening of the show. Yeah. Then, no, no, then the, sec the second time they did it, the second time they did it, they were a lot smarter. Like, you bought tickets at a certain gate. They had you funnel into that gate. They were like, no, you can't come in this entrance. You got to go over there. Like, they were a lot smarter the second time. First time, absolute shit show. So okay. I found the, I found the release protocol and waiver thing that yeah yeah uh, so every attendee including children must complete a waiver and health questionnaire makes sense all get absolutely yeah. all guests will be given a free kn95 mask which i'm excited for can i be honest i'm like yo let me get that mania mask there will be there will be wrestlemania <laughs> brand masks that you can buy so that that should I be hope buy one of those. Car Carol's like you better buy one or two. Yes. Uh, temperature check. Obviously, we have that at work, so that's nothing new. Standing or congregating in now, any section except for your seat is prohibited. Now I'm gonna be honest. I hope I pass the temperature check because I am caliente. Boy. <sighs> no bags. No bags allowed in the stadium at all. 
none. Um, and let, except okay. for a four wait, wait. and a half by six and a half fucking handbag. Wait, okay. I have to I have to ask this because I was reading this list to my friends actually before we were out at dinner. We went to IHOP. It was really good. Um, so we were there, and I was reading this list because again I was like, oh wait, WrestleMania protocol. It's, it's interesting actually because like. You know, it's funny. I was just listening to JR's podcast a few minutes before we came on here. Ask anything? And what? It was ask, any, ask JR anything, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, one of those. I didn't even get that far into it yet. He didn't even start getting asked questions. But he, they did talk about the whole um, the protocol and everything for events and how WrestleMania is not only the first big kind of test event for wrestling, but almost any sport in general, like besides the Super Bowl, but the Super Bowl is a totally different animal than a regular football game or a regular basketball game or any other big event like WrestleMania. WrestleMania is more in line with every other sporting event that is hoping to be able to bring in the number of fans that WrestleMania is bringing in. In fact, WrestleMania also has a lot more fans than the Super Bowl was allowed to have because we've come far in a couple of months in terms of COVID and stuff, which is great news. So it's going to be interesting seeing all these things. And that's why it's a really interesting topic, actually, seeing this list of, like, what, what their precautions are and such. So I was reading it to my friends, though, and they were kind of like, why the whole no bag thing? Like, that's a weird one because you wouldn't think that that's related to COVID in any capacity. So why all of a sudden is it like you're not allowed any kind of bags? Because you're always allowed at least small bags or, like, see-through or whatever. Now it's, like, none. Like, I almost wonder if this was just like, hey, we're going to take this opportunity to cut this because we never liked it. But it has nothing to do with COVID. Like, how how could it possibly relate? I mean, it could be it could be they wanted to cut it. But another thing that it could be potentially is to expedite the cleanup process because they know that they're going to have to probably clean out pods at the end of the right. night. And with, with the quick turnaround, people will leave bags. Oh, they'll just take the shirt and, you know, oh, I just want it in the bag so it doesn't get ruined during the show. And then they'll just leave it fucking laying around. And it right. may it may expedite the pickup, the pickup time because it, it is a quick turnaround. Because, you know, that show's probably going to be over about 11, 12 o'clock. And that gate's going to open again at 4 o'clock. You know, you got 16-ish hours to get ready for, for night two. And you got to go full bore again. So that that's kind of where I'm at with the plastic bags. Right. I, it, it, I, I think it's to expedite the cleanup time. Because they're going to have to focus on getting... They have to focus on getting the chairs clean and and and, and everything re re sanitized and shit like that. I think that's right. more where I stand on the bag situation. Um, also, contactless uh, sales for all food and merchandise. Wait, can you imagine? Are they gonna have to like like basically clean and sterilize and like wipe down every chair from night one to night two? Because I feel bad for everyone. That's the assumption. I, I I would assume. I mean, I, I would assume like, that there's some. Well, he's spray. How about like a big spray, right. maybe over it? You know, spray I'm over. It. I'm saying, I'm saying that or, that or maybe they have some kind of like machine that they can come have spray everything down and then and then move and like exactly. kind of do it in sections. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, I, that's a that's a real thing that may take place, and I think that's a, something that I'm like, telling cleanup you. Is, you send in the three middle-aged Italian women with some Lysol and a couple of things of paper towels. That thing done. will be spotless done. for like done. an hour. Whole um, place. No paper tickets for WrestleMania. So if you're a ticket collector, there ain't any of those. Everything's going to be on the phone through a contactless scanner. You're going to scan your own ticket. I like that. It's, I love that, especially if we get the, the, the pay dirt and somebody right. comes with us. Perfect. Um, no pre or post show tailgating. And the best one that I like so far, there's going to be a special WrestleMania app that's going to get released before the event to assist fans with rules, regulations, and merchandise. So that might be a cool little, our own little WrestleMania app. So kind of excited about that. You know, I'm actually surprised it's taken them that long to do that because like film festivals have had apps forever. I've been to Sundance where, you know, you download the Sundance app and you get up to date like this, that, and the other. Times. Given how much of an event WrestleMania week has become. I mean, weekend at the very least, but even week at this point, I'm surprised it's taken them this long to be like, here's the official WrestleMania app, you know, keep track of all the oh. events. Yeah, it's yeah, surprising thought... actually, not to say that. It's yeah. kind of surprising. I would have thought that it would have been an expedited thing, especially with like mobile orders for yeah. merchandise and food and stuff like that. So people are yeah, in their exactly. seats more. Um, 
Is that is that the entire fast lane card no, though? No, no, one more, one more. Main event. Okay, all right, let's get back. Reigns, the champ. Dan Bryan's a challenger. I mean, I mean, it's quite obvious Roman Reigns is going to win this match. I mean, it's not, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm more concerned about the extra shit that could possibly happen around the match than the actual result of the match. Okay, so so first of all, that sound that you just heard was not a dolphin impression. That was me questioning this decision. Um, it wasn't. I, uh, it was an American nightmare. No, no, it was not Cookie Monster doing AEW ring intros. Not this week. No. I actually, and this might just go to how well this storyline has been built. It goes to how great the promo work that Daniel Bryan has been doing is, how great everything that's been going on on SmackDown in regards to all of this has been. If you told me that Daniel Bryan was going to win, I would not be 100% shocked. I actually would feel like that is them paying off on a really interesting storyline. And I'm almost a little worried because they put so many eggs into this storyline basket for Daniel Bryan that I don't know what he does if he's not involved in the world title scene. Now, granted, I don't know that I can actually see them doing a three-way. I don't know that I see them doing Edge versus Bryan versus Roman. The only scenario where I see that is if there's any kind of worry about the shape that Edge could potentially be in. Because let's face it, since he's returned from injury... He's wrestled, what, twice? If that, including the Royal Rumble. So maybe they're a little concerned of, like, can what can he take bump-wise, yada, yada, yada. It might not be enough of a concern for them to not put the title on him, but it might, might be enough of a concern for them to be like, let's get Daniel Bryan in this match. Let's make it a three-way, you know what I mean? Which is easy to do at this point. You just have Daniel win the belt. It isn't the most unheard of thing. It could even potentially be a way to protect Roman. Because if you get the belt on Daniel via some kind of craziness, you have Edge cost fucking Roman the title or something. You have Brian win it that way. And then you have Edge go on and end up beating Brian in the match at WrestleMania and end up becoming champion. Roman's not taking like a real pinfall at that point in any capacity. He's kind of been protected. And you still have like where to go from there. Mike is questioning this, and I love it. Please go. I don't think I'm questioning it. I, th- I think I'm I'm getting to somewhere else. Okay. You, you talked to, you talked about protecting Roman. I don't think Roman losing whether there's shenanigans involved or not is, is the matter we have to use here. Okay. If you remember if you remember when we talked about Brian eventually pot- potentially becoming the number one contender for the title, it yeah. was at the expense of a Daniel Bryan and Edge versus Roman Reigns and Jey Uso match at Fastlane. Right. Why not have Edge just come out and spear the fuck out of Daniel Bryan and have it, it end in disqualification? Then you add Bryan to the match. You have Bryan fucking take the fall from either one of those guys. He keeps both of them looking strong and he gets them out of there with either Edge being the new champion and Roman moving on to whatever, or it right. has Roman coming out and being the fucking dominating heel because he destroyed Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. Right. And here's the so question. I- I'm not opposed to Brian somehow getting into that match. I don't know that that's going to happen. But right. I'm not opposed to it. See, that's the thing. Like, I don't feel like Roman gains anything really by beating Brian here either. Like, it's not like Roman needed another big title defense before losing the belt to Edge. This like this isn't like legitimately. Boom, that was not English. Wow. Is, this is, is that a word? That I Let's try it again. Take two. <laughs> Slim Shady. Um, it is not like a chance to make Roman look more legitimate as champion because, oh, he's beating Daniel Bryan. Roman already looks like the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Roman's already the top guy. Like, all they can do at this point, basically, the way I feel, is if they beat Bryan, you're kind of just burying Bryan. You're putting him in a place where, like I said, I don't know what he does on WrestleMania. I don't see them doing a singles match between Daniel Bryan and Jey Uso on either night of WrestleMania. I don't care if you have 14 matches to slot in. I don't see that being a four, one of the 14 matches. So I don't know what you do with Bryan at that point. Do you put him in some sort of ladder match, like for the IC title? Do you go in that direction? Or I, pers- as a Daniel Bryan fan, and maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is my eyes are very much clouded by the fact that he is quite literally my second favorite wrestler of all time, only behind the man who trained him, Shawn Michaels. So maybe I'm a little clouded into my judgment and I'm saying I hope Daniel wins because I want to see him in the main event at WrestleMania 
defending the title. Even if he loses, I want to see him there. I want to get a chance to mark out one more time. Maybe from the front row, if we're lucky, for Daniel Bryan coming out. Like, I, we won't be slapping hands because it's still COVID. But I will very gladly be like, yo, Brian, like, woo! You know, like, I'm here. I was there out of all four, and I'm here now. Like, wow. I, I don't see them. I, I just think I don't. I don't see Vince and in the in the in the, uh, in the boys go effort into this fucking event. What what did, what did Joe say to go to the bathroom? Uh, water, I believe. A water. I'm gonna copy us. No, I don't. I don't see him putting much effort into this Bone event. Charger. Honestly, mm, I think the, charger, the, the main party the here is is solely just making sure the cock works to go into mania. I don't see any extra effort really. I mean, you can you can make it seem like it, it's to see if it works, but you still have to put a halfway decent show out there. Of course. Whether, I agree. Because here's the thing. You can put a shit show out there. You could put a fucking right. uh Starcade like they did like the house shows that they were calling Starcade right. on there to run to run internet signal. But when you got like seventy five billion people on an app trying to figure out if it's gonna load or not, it's a lot different whenever you have a real show that people actually love to watch. Than a shit card that you're just putting together. Yeah. The reality of the situation is this card, it's not only for Peacock, this got made because they pushed WrestleMania back two weeks. Yeah. This was supposed to be the build to WrestleMania. WrestleMania was supposed to be like next weekend. Yeah. They pushed it back to the 11th to, to get us through Easter and all that stuff. Like this was supposed to be, this was the fucking end point of the Mania build, which right now, and we pushed it back two weeks. So that we could have fans there and so that everyone would be safe. Cool. I love it. I'm glad I'm going to be there. I'm glad to be part of the audience again. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, this thing kind of got put together last minute to accommodate yeah. the fact that they pushed Mania back two weeks. Yeah. And then they announced yeah. Then they announced Peacock because they announced this show before Peacock. So at the end of the day, I think this is literally like. Which I have to assume from, that even before they announced it, that the ball was yeah. already rolling about. Yeah, yeah. they must have had, like, yeah. contract. Yeah, they already had the ball rolling on that on Peacock. Right, and and the thing is, like, they could have very easily slotted it into the calendar as a just-in-case the Peacock thing happens. And if it doesn't happen, we either still do the show on the WWE Network or we just kibosh the show. Nobody will even notice. You know, there's no... You're not selling tickets. You don't have a live audience. You could very easily just be like, you know what, the show is now off the schedule. Like, that could have happened. But mm-hmm. obviously, I think you're right. I think this is the grand test because you're not testing it at WrestleMania. That's not the time no. that you want to find out that the system sucks and it's no, all broken because, down. Because at that point, the network will be gone. Like, yeah, there will exactly. be no fallback plan. There Rest will be no peace. contingency plan. But the thing was, is if you had a contingency plan, at least there would be something that made sense. There's not even a contingency plan. Like, literally, if it doesn't work, oh, oh, well. I mean, I'm betting that right now the contingency plan is the WWE Network. Because while they say, obviously, right now it's supposed to die on, what, April 1st or something like that? April 5th. Yeah. So on April 5th, which is only, what, six days before the WrestleMania or a couple nights, maybe less than that, it's supposed to officially go off. If Fastlane... Go dark, they said. Right. If Fastlane becomes a mess, if if the stream fails, if Peacock can't handle it, if, you know, whatever, if they need to make sure that WWE Network doesn't die on the 5th, it stays alive through WrestleMania to make sure that that's not the catastrophe that it could potentially be, I think they do. I think that is their backup plan right now. And mm. it's a smart backup plan, honestly. Like, look... And this is not going to surprise any of you to hear me say, I'm rooting for the cock. So I'm hoping that it all goes well, but it's good to have a backup plan. Like, literally, you and I, Mike, we have a WrestleMania backup plan. We bought our tickets today as Mm -hmm. our backup plan in case, you know, we can't score better ones tomorrow. So, like, I get where you're coming from, Vince, and this is your backup plan. By the way. I love, that, I love that for you. you, love, you for the I, I appreciate that. I, I love it for me, too. <laughs> thing is like, like, at the end of the day, I get it. Like I said, I get all of it, and you guys are absolutely right. This show is just a glorified Raw, SmackDown, at least that's what it feels like it's going to be on paper. And it doesn't need to be anything else. Like, if, like if, if at the end of the day, if Vince just wants this to be, hey, we had to throw a show on, we had to put something out there, yeah. hopefully these matches are at least decent, Hopefully people enjoy them like that, but nothing 
remotely worthwhile or noteworthy happens. No titles change hands. Nothing changes towards WrestleMania. That is a real possibility. And for those of us who are tuning in because we're fans and we're excited, that would kind of suck. And that would kind of like, I don't know that it would take the wind out of my sails because like I'm going to WrestleMania. I'm yeah, excited. Exactly. Oh. But if I wasn't going to WrestleMania and if I was only going to be watching it from home, I think my wind, the wind would be a little bit out of my sails at that point. It's funny how this, this is like a nothing fucking pay-per-view and yet we spent 40 minutes on it. It's awesome. Right. Well, well I, I, I told you we can take anything out of shit and make it make a topic out of it. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is like you've now cut your build time of WrestleMania in half because you just decided to take time to build this meaningless show. I mean, at the end of the right. day, like we got to come out of this knowing what's going on. We know that night. We know that the two main events are Drew and and Bobby versus each other, and you know Roman versus Edge. But that's really all that we really got right now. You know, and, and Oscar, Oscar versus okay, for, okay, Disney, Sasha versus Bianca, right. Okay. Honest, last time, though. Last one. Okay. Go ahead. Last thing I'll say about this, right? I am a fan of when they build the Mania card over a long time. I'm a fan of when I've said this before on here. When it's like you can tell months and months in advance. Like I love that you that the Randy Orton Bray Wyatt feud's been going on since like October, and it's gonna pay off at WrestleMania. I love stuff like that. The way Facts. the current card is, the way things are kind of going. I'm almost rooting for this to be one of those years where, like, we have fast lane, and then on Monday morning they go into a meeting, and the man is just like, "This isn't working for me." Like, like one, like the big matches. Okay, we're fine. Like Randy Orton. That may the happen. Feed, <laughs> right, like Randy Orton and the Fiend, we're fine. Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, we're fine. Everything else, fucking throw it away. Let's start from scratch. Like, let's figure something out. Like Roman Reigns and Edge, we're fine. But, like, I don't want fucking AJ Styles and his really tall friend taking on the New Day. You don't want that one? such a fucking waste of everybody in that match. You don't want none, do you? Almost. I don't. I don't want none of that. You are okay. correct. Well, we'll find I, 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 I want to read off my WrestleMania card because I literally did it while we were doing this topic. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll read it off real quick, and I want you guys just to give me a quick reaction. Night okay. one. Drew versus Bobby. Sasha versus Bianca. Mm-hmm. Apollo Crews versus Big E. The SmackDown tag title gauntlet match between Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus the teams of uh, Otis and Gable, uh, the Street Profits, uh, myself and Joe Lopez, um, maybe a random tag team of like the British Bulldogs, Illegitimate Love Child, and Jushin Thunder Liger. Um, we'll see if we get them in there. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus The Miz and Morrison, and Orton versus Bray Wyatt. That's night one. That's Dak White one, actually. Yeah, decent. Night two. Roman versus Edge. Okay. O- Oscar versus Charlotte Flair. Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair as the smack or excuse me, as the women's tag team champions in a gauntlet match versus other women. Mm. The US the US title ladder clusterfuck of hell. That Matt Riddle against uh Shelton, Cedric Alexander, uh me, Joe. We might even get Ernest up there for that match. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I retired, Ray. I have uh, issues. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. All right, Juicy yeah. Thunder Liger. <laughs> Raw tag title match between the New Day and AJ and Omos. And then finally, Shane versus Braun. I like Night One better, personally. This is me. Oh, I love. I think Night One is definitely the better show, Just but it saying. keeps a balance of like three matches from each show on each night. So it's not like, oh, Raw right. on one night, SmackDown on another, which is the way that I told Joe it should have been. They should have done all the Raw show, all the Raw on one and all SmackDown on the other, but whatever, I digress. I wouldn't hate that. Alrighty. This is Joe's topic. I'm really, really excited about this topic because AEW has been a nice little run the last two weeks after the shit show with fucking revolution. Joe, let's go. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is easy, right? Mike wanted to do a, a fantasy booking of the next AEW pay per view, and it's in May. Oh, why don't we see what Ernest can throw together? Also, can't be worse than Tony Khan. And I'm really good at this shit, so I might as well do something better than both of them. So that's how we've ended up with my topic. We're all gonna put together our own little cards for AEW Double or Nothing 2021, and I mean. We're going to discuss them amongst ourselves. Okay. And we'll if you guys want to comment or anything, feel free. You can all you can tell everyone why Ernest's card sucks and why mine is the best. Okay. Um, you're also allowed to like Mike's. So, right. um, 
I don't know if you guys want to, who you want to start with or where you want to go with this. It was Mike's thing originally. So maybe Mike should introduce his card first. Well, real quick, well, Mike, did you finish Dynamite last night from last night? Hmm? Did you finish Dynamite? Did you finish it? I watched most of it. Oh, shit. It was a good episode. Really, I literally saw Britt Baker covered in blood. I, I saw the end. I saw what I didn't see. Trust me. I know okay. what happened. Um, okay. So, first off, for any of you that enjoyed the first episode of AEW Evolution, uh, to take a line from Joe Lopez, I love that for you. <laughs> for the love of God, if Tony Khan ever shows up on my screen again, screaming like a three-year-old child about how Kenny Omega doesn't make the match, here I do. Are you serious? Looking like a fucking homeless bum, I will fucking not watch another episode oh, of that show ever that again. Came from with the fucking fluffy ass. Oh hair. my god, he literally looks like he is coming down from a thirteen-day meth binge. Yes, and literally does not know where his wallet is. I know what the meme meant. <laughs> I know what the meme meant. I saw the meme two days ago. Yeah. Like Joe said, we went from having Uncle Tony suit and tie, Tony Stark to. Uh, Goldberg after his meth binge and can't get on the new Mighty Duck show on Disney Plus. Well, can we be honest, you literally, though, we, his hair it looks like he stuck his finger in a light socket. As big as AD Mark as I am, I forget Dark still exists. I don't watch Dark. How? How? I just don't watch them. Like, like, uh-uh. How do you forget that it exists? There's 37 matches. But, and, I don't, and, I don't, and, I don't, and, and I don't want. I don't want to turn this into a like shitting all over AEW thing because I like. Like Ernest, I've actually really enjoyed the last yes. two weeks worth of Dynamite. Um, but I have to say this because it's come up and I feel like it's... I, I have to say it, right? This is systematically part of AEW's problem, right? That even some of their most diehard fans don't remember that Dark or now Elevation even exists. But yet, when you look at the rankings, when you look at who's getting pushed and stuff... Half of it is all based on matches that take place on Dark. Like, half the reason why SCU is the number one contender for a tag title is because they've won 11 matches on Dark. I don't think they've appeared on Dynamite, but, like, once this year so far. That's a problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. systematic problem with the way AEW is doing whatever it's doing. That's all I wanted to say about that. Okay, continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I made, I made two cards for this. Uh, one that was very near and dear to my heart with the blood and guts. Uh, I'll, fin- I'll finish with that category. I'll start with my first one that I went a little bit more reserved on because I thought that maybe we won't get the big blow off to the inner circle versus the pinnacle. Um, so, started off, Sean Spears versus Darby Allen for the TNT title. Pinnacle gets their first taste of gold uh, as Spears wins the TNT title from Darby Allen. Second match, FTR of the pinnacle take on the Young Bucks, excuse me, for the tag titles after the Young Bucks beat Death Triangle in a match on Dynamite. Um, so I have FTR claiming gold there as well. So first night as on pay-per-view as a unit, they walk out with two-thirds of the AEW titles. Uh, Wardlow and MJF versus the tag team of Chris Jericho and Sammy Govea, uh, which I would have MJF and Wardlow win, obviously. Uh, you're not going to really have them lose uh then i have kenny omega and the good brothers versus the team of john moxley eddie kingston and a little help from the door uh a guy who kenny omega is going to fight in a title versus title match at uh impact wrestling's uh retribution or revelation or i don't fucking know whatever the fuck it's called uh i have moxley and kingston paired with the impact wrestling world champion rich swan uh, I have Hukaro Shida defending the AEW women's title against Jade Cargill, which I have Jade walking out as the champion. Uh, I actually have Moxley Kingston and Swan winning that six-man tag match after pinning one member of the Good Brothers because Kenny's not taking a fall right now, let's be real. Uh, I have a number one contenders casino battle royale because we need more battle royals in AEW. I went right for the heart here. I went right for the thing that they they do the most. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Joe, really? No battle royals? I'm so I didn't mind the one that on, on Revolution. Hmm? I'm so good on Battle Royals. Oh, I am too. Day, I, dude. I am too, but the reason why I booked this one is for a very specific reason. The winner of the Battle Royale gets us to where we want to be. Adam Page goes two for two in heavyweight title, Casino Battle 
Pals, wins it, and then takes on Kenny at the next pay-per-view. That's how we get there. I mean, it makes sense. It's how they like to of do course. it. Yeah. And in my pre-show match, I have uh, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon, the Lucha Bros, just so I could hear fucking Ernest try to sing this fucking theme song right now, taking on SCU, where if SCU's, SCU loses, they will no longer tag together, which I then have uh, the Lucha Bros win, ending Kazarian Danielson. Okay. That is the first card. The second card will be a little bit more uh, raw, but I'll let you guys uh, give, give, give me some feedback on that one. Let me know what you think. I I I mean, lot, very out of the box, obviously with the, with the six man tag. Um, I think you and I are on the same page though when it comes to the world title not being up for grabs this this uh, pay per view. I'm with you on that because if you mind, I'll go to my card now real quick. In lieu of, of last night and feeling energetic about Dynamite last night and how things went, a lot of focus in my card will be on the women's division, mostly on the women's main event. I'm going to take the momentum from last night and push it there. Let's assume that Double Nothing was in two weeks. I'm going to pull a WrestleMania 10 uh, option out of the hat. I'm going to have Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa fight again to open the show. The winner faces Sheeta at the end of the show. So I have Britt Baker beating, th- I have Britt Baker beating Thunder Rosa to start the show off. Regular match, not, 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 none of the fucking unsanctioned shit from like did last night. And then I have Britt Baker being she to win the title. I kind of like it, actually. I like how out of the box it is. It is time. Oh, no. It is time. Oh. Like, I know we had this topic last year about Britt Baker, you know, the she title or not. But after last night, it is. And I, I, I was on Twitter, too, and the feedback from people there, I was like, it's time. It's time. What's for the, 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 the I like about that, Mike? Because I actually really like that as a concept. It's actually right, pushing. Let's... Well, real quick, let me, let me go to my card first, and we can we can we can, we can uh, go to mine because I think again, Mike and I are on the same page in terms of like not trying to make the world title a thing. The world title is no, the world title will not be a focus of this yeah, event yeah. at all. Okay, so I have Britt win the title. You know, win, win two matches the same way. Brett, well, the Brett lost the first one. You know what I mean? Um, speaking of the world title, he, Omega will be tied up with a six man tag with, of course, the Good Brothers. He'll be facing Moxley, Kingston. And I, I went simple with Adam Page. I went simple on that one. Uh, I have the Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle in a false Count Anywhere match. Now, it could be anything. It could be like a Ball and Guts. It could be fucking, I don't know, another Stadium Stampede type of shit. It's definitely a blood feud at this point now. Uh, I got Darby Allen against Lance Archer. Lance Archer winning the title. I think that Lance Archer is time for a push. Uh, and then I have the tag team titles on the line. Young Bucks against Death Triangle. Uh, I'll take the Bucks to, to hold on to the titles. Um, but my focus is really is, is, is to get the focus on the, the TNT Championship changes hands, the Women's Championship changes hands at night. That's my focus for this event. And, I'm, and I'm, this, is yeah. all based, this is all based on last night, too, also. I did a lot of momentum off last night's uh, uh, Dynamite. So, you know, so what's funny to me is you had me kind of excited with the whole women's thing because number one, I like the like call back to Mania Ten, and I would love to see. That's why when I was trying to put my card together, I couldn't figure out a way to get Britt Baker into the title match. Like I don't feel like that's what they're building right now, and I would love to see it. Like it was where my mind went to first, but number one, she didn't even win last night. Like spoilers, right. sorry. And like, like, she came really out looking a little the number one contender when she didn't even win the match against Thunder no, Rosa yesterday. It's right. I said that. Right. She didn't so win. That's a, Correct. Like, I like I like your thinking with that, and I like where that goes with the women's division. But um, the rest of the card, I felt like was a little bit more kind of just there and basic compared to what they've got. Probably what they're going to do, and I don't know that I did much better. And I'll, I'll present you my guys now. Is that is that go, is go, go. Time? Uh, okay. I didn't I'll show for you. the record before before you get there, let me finish the uh, comment because I shook my head yeah. on Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker. You asked why he wanted to finish his card. Um they've now fought what three times or twice? Twice? I think twice. Maybe, I guess. Okay. Britt won the first one via ref's decision after I think some shenanigans. And then there was this one. Okay. This was the end of their feud. 
and unsanctioned lights out fucking like, hey, all right, this is like, I'll see you in six months to a year when you're champion or I'm champion and, and, and we get to that point. Like, I don't think that this is a realistic standpoint of where we're going with the women's division. Um, I don't think you can put Britt in the title match because she lost. And I don't think beating Thunder Rosa should get her a shot at it when she already has a win against Thunder Rosa. It's not like Thunder Rosa's 37-0 and 0 and she's like the Bill Goldberg of the women's division. Right. She just hasn't had a title match yet. I mean, she literally has lost matches on Dynamite. She's lost to Sheeta. Uh, I- I'm sorry. Like, you tell me that there's a women's, like, okay, Jade Cargill wins every fucking week on Dynamite between now and Double or Nothing. And she's 9-0. and 0. And you have Britt Baker or Thunder Rosa fight her right. first and win? Cool. You can sell me on them going through someone. You're not selling me on them having another match against each other. And that, that that's, that's why I'm shaking my head. That match doesn't mean that you should get a title shot. That match that they had was fantastic. That match, from what I saw of it, was great. Right. My priority, number one, as you can see here, is getting Britt to the title now. It's time. Because here's the thing. She it's lost. Been time for fucking. Wait, 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 hold on. It's been time for a year and a half, and they haven't fucking pulled the hold trigger. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why hold on, are you going to do it now? It, here's a, here's a, here's a bottom line. This is all based on. Obviously, I'm a little emotional about this now because it's, it's, it happened last night. Thunder Rosa won the match. Yeah. Who's getting the attention right now? Ray Baker. The the, the fucking t- new T-shirts are right out now with the, with the blood. You know the whole, <laughs> that whole thing. And, and here's it, my thing. I think at this point, unfortunately, it's not time. It, it feels like it should be time because she is the top women's act in the division, in the Thanks. company. No question. Has been for a while. We all, we all have agreed with this for a while. And we all would want to see her at the top. We've said it for a while. Remember even the week where we were like, does she need the women's title? And I was like, no. But the women's title could use her, if we're all sure. being honest. That's still the case. And we're at that point now. She's not point. there right now. And I kind of see what Mike's point is. I would love to see, like, look, she just lost this match to Thunder Rosa. It was an incredible match. If you haven't seen it, go out of your way to see it. It's that level of good. Better. I would recommend that Talk match. Talk about your candy. Episode, like, I'd recommend this whole episode of Dynamite more than I would the pay-per-view they did two weeks ago. 100%, including this match. This match was better than almost anything on that pay-per-view, including the women's title match on that pay-per-view. I would now love to see, okay, Britt's done her job. She put Thunder Rosa over. She's done everything for the division. Let's let Britt now have a little run. Let, let have her win a bunch of matches, come out on Dynamite a couple of weeks, win some contests. Do you get, put her in chase mode? Yeah, put her into chase mode so that maybe not by double or nothing, but maybe by all out. She could be the contender for the title. Maybe maybe it's the last pay-per-view of the year. Maybe it's full gear where you've built her up now for all these months and she is legitimately the person that should take the title. I can see all of that. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm uh, segue into my card. Because no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. I'm, I'm going to start with a match that I was surprised to hear Mike say. I thought I'd be the only one to throw it on my card. I would have Sheeta defend the title against Jade. And... Here's the thing. I'm not a huge fan of Jade's. I think she has an amazing look. I think she has a lot of potential in the ring. I think they're rushing her. I think they're they are, they are getting her way ahead of where she needs to be. She might be a prodigy, and I hope that she is. She looks great so far. I'm a fan of what I've seen of her. I'm not a fan of the hardcore way they're pushing her. And they're making her like the female Goldberg. That's actually who she's becoming for AEW. I feel it, you know. But I booked this. Like, I I wrote this down and tried to put this together based also, like Ernest was saying, on Dynamite last night and the last couple of weeks. So, given that... Jade reminds me of the the Ronda Rousey push with less in-ring skills. Yes, exactly. So, but here's the thing, right? If I'm booking this based on what I think AEW is actually going to do... They're giving her this push. They are yes. giving her the push that they're not giving almost anyone else in the company, male, female, or otherwise. They they almost never. In, in, and look, Luchasaurus is there. Okay, he's a dinosaur. Otherwise, he's a dinosaur. So like they they can't like they never really seem to invest this into anyone that they're investing into her. So you know what? For once, 
see it the fuck through. If this is the person you've decided to put in your eggs in their basket, put your eggs in their basket and now push the fucking basket. Get it to where it needs to be. You want us to see Jade as the Goldberg of the division? You want her to run through this person, that person? Red Velvet is currently ranked number one. You want Jade to beat Red Velvet? You know she's going to? Give me that in about three weeks on Dynamite. Give me that on the road to this. Have her in there with Sheeta. Have her win the belt. I'm so over Sheeta as champion that I would rather see Jade as champion at that point. And I don't know where you go from there, but you know what? I feel like that division, it needs something. And at the very least, if, if the start of building up that division is having someone who is clearly in control right. of the division. I don't hate it. Fucking give it to me. I don't hate it. In fact, if it, it wasn't going to be Britt Baker for me, number number two would have been Jade because of everything you just said. Right. It's, the it's, first it's, they're gonna do, I, I get so annoyed with AEW because it seems like they have these guys and, and girls who they start to push and then they stop. And like it begins. Broke sky. Thank you very much. And then, right, and, then, and then it's like, oh, we were almost there and now we're not there. So, like, and it's like, it's what they do with Scorpio Sky every time. Remember, I'm making that joke last week where it's like, oh, it's been six months. We haven't had Scorpio Sky's two weeks. Maybe now, yet. though. He's heel. Maybe now. Right, right. And this might be now the time where, we, like, they give him a little bit more. I just want to see them follow through with someone. Like, you know what? You're giving me, you're giving me Jade. You're giving her this push. Follow through. So that's where right. I'm starting, okay? Speaking of follow through. First, right now, first. I, I wrote first, this down. Did you see that? First, like, what? Mike, Mike. Actually, Paper. And Joe first thing, the way. Go ahead. First thing Jade should do is take the uh, Fisher Price uh, Little People's title that 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 would fit around Ultimate Warrior's <laughs> waist and Increase just like it. throw it in the trash can. I agree, hundred percent. I hate that fucking I title that. for that reason alone. She's so jacked that title's gonna look like a fucking action figure. Fucking title belt on her. Continue. Sorry, All I right. just want to get that so, out. So next, another one going off of last night's show, and I feel like this is an obvious direction. I think we're going to get another Coda and Penta match. I think their match last night, I was a fan of it. I've read some things online where some people weren't big fans of it. I loved it. I, I loved it. I thought it was a great match. And it left the door open for more. I have a feeling that we're going to either from the match last night or some kind of angle coming up, we're going to write Cody out for a few weeks. He's about to be a dad. He's going to need a little bit of time. This is an easy one. This is an easy way. Get Penta to just injure him. They played with it on last night's show. Like I said, they could use already from last night's show and be like, oh, his, his shoulder's messed up. He's going to be out for a hot minute. Or they can have Penta do something to him this coming week on Dynamite. Whatever. This is easy. You take Cody out of the picture for a few weeks. You have him come back. Literally, the attack Penta in enough time to set up a gimmick match. I don't know how to say it in Spanish. I don't even know what kind of gimmick this would be, but I would call it a Day of the Dead match. Because that seems like, like, it's basically take the fucking movie Coco and turn it into a pro wrestling match. <laughs> Not cinematic. I don't want to see it cinematic. It is more adults? Yes, exactly. Something like that. Ask, ask Carol. She'll know. By the but way, like, right. Penta has my, is my favorite entrance right now in all the AEW. Oh, yeah, no, I, I love it, Penta, and I love that they're finally using him as a singles guy. And him and Cody, they mesh really well together in the ring. So I'm here for this. Give me a specialty match. Make it a, I, I want to see a Day of the Dead match. I don't know what that re involves. I feel like like candy skulls and maybe guitars, but maybe I'm just thinking of Coco. <laughs> so let's do Three that. Men let's do that match. All right, now, I'm going to stay in the Nightmare family here. This match should be all of about five minutes. Maybe it's even just on the pre-show. But again, follow through. I'm not a big fan of the storyline. I don't hate the storyline. I don't care that much about the guys in the storyline. But if you're giving it to me, fucking give it to me. Give me a Dustin versus fucking QT Marshall match. Make it five minutes. Just be done with it. But you're giving me the storyline. You're making me invest my time in watching this storyline play out. Give me a payoff and give, give me a payoff. payoff for it. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like at that point, like look, you're making me watch this storyline build every week on Dynamite. I want to see where it goes. Give me the fucking match. I don't think QT Marshall is ever going to be like world champion. I don't think he's getting that push. I don't think they're lining him up for that. But they're clearly trying to use him in some capacity that's not just enhancement talent. So you know what? Do it. Like, follow through, okay? All right. 
Up next, speaking of follow through, Scorpio Sky, all right? I'm going to put him in the TV title match. I'm not making it a one-on-one -on -one match because, honestly, I don't like Scorpio Sky. I would actually rather see him just go away. I, I, you know, look, I'm going to be honest, right? I've never been that big a fan of Scorpio Sky. Not, Why? Not, I've, I've been watching this man wrestle since at least 2008. Ever since I started watching Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Is this style or something? Or this, uh... No, no, it's just, he's a great, he's a really good wrestler who's not much different from a bunch of other really good wrestlers. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. He's a great guy to have on your roster. He's a great utility player. And I think he's perfect in that role, which is why it always confuses me why every six months AEW was like, oh, yeah, let's push him for three weeks. But now, like I, like I keep saying, follow through. I don't want to see it, but if they're going to push him, fucking follow through. Is he better I off at SEU him. or the solo act, you think? No, he's better off by himself. He's okay. better off by himself. That is true. So have him in the TV title match. I'm also going to put in the TV title match Brian Cage because I feel like he belongs somewhere. And to make it a four-way, obviously Darby Allen's in it. He's my champion. And to make it a four-way, someone who has had no interaction with these guys whatsoever on TV so far. But I don't know what else you would do with him anyway. And in my opinion, he's probably the biggest star that this company is not actually pushing the way they should be right now. And it's Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy should be up there with your Sammy Guevara. He should be up there with like your that. MJF. He should be up there with your Darby Allen. He should be getting that level of push, and he's not. He's he's really – and the thing is, like, when they get him into that near role, like him and Ray Phoenix and their last little interaction in that Battle Royal, they were great together in that. I need more of that. So that's my TV title match for you. My tag title match, really simple, Young Bucks – Death Triangle, whatever the hell they're called, two thirds, half Phoenix. Probably have the Bucks retain the titles. Yeah, Doesn't really yeah. matter that much. Fucking right. castles. And I also went with like like you guys. I also like we kind of all agreed last week. I don't need Omega defending the title on this show. I've got Omega in the six man with the Good Brothers. I guess they're they're kind of uh they're kind of making that one obvious that that's gonna end up on the card. I feel like. But yeah. I've got Omega with the Good Brothers. I've got him against Moxley, Kingston, and Christian Cage. Ooh. Because I feel like I have I have that I have that as as my match on the second card. So okay. I feel like Cage is going to be the next challenger for Omega's belt, and not at the next pay per view necessarily. Not necessarily at not not, not double or nothing, but even the one after that. I don't think he's necessarily going to be the challenger by all in. I think he's going to be a challenger on a special episode of Dynamite at some point, somewhere in between all of this, that Omega gets, you know, a, a victory that he can hang his hat on. Because let's face it, like, your title reign is great, but your title reign is only as great as the people that you've defeated. And at a certain point, it's like, okay, he's defeated Moxley, and he's defeated Matt Seidel, and Ray Phoenix, and fucking Max Caster. Like, you got to get him some wins that matter more than that. Christian Cage has been brought into the company to be that level of guy. So let's just do it. And finally, my main event, I'm going Pinnacle versus Inner Circle. I'm going all in on it, but I'm not going blood and guts. We're still in the, we're still in the COVID era. This show's still taking place in Jacksonville. This might be the last opportunity you actually get to do this since this might be one of the last pay-per-views without fans. Stadium Stampede 2. And you know what? That doesn't need to be a feud-ending match. That, that could be more, you know, you can play that in a way where it builds more. Blood and Guts is yep. a feud-ending match. I don't want this feud to be over in just seven weeks. I feel like you can do this big match, Stadium MB2, as the first chapter and then let it simmer. And then maybe by full circle, we're doing Blood and Guts. Not Plus, you could peel off solos too. You could peel off uh, MGF exactly. again. So, Jericho. Yeah, right. all, yeah. uh, all out, you can do all the solo stuff. Right. And then by full gear, you end the year with Blood and Guts. But I would start it, like I said, especially because it's taking place in Jacksonville. It's where you're doing the pay per view. It's very likely I'm going to go ahead and take a guess, especially if the world keeps moving in the direction it's been moving and let's, you know, it's all pray to whoever you pray to that that's going to happen. Then, David Hasselhoff? Yes, absolutely. I don't hassle the Hulk. 
So I feel <laughs> like this is going to end up being the last pay-per-view that's not, at the very least, in Jacksonville, but full of fans. At, at the very least, if not just on the road again. So this might be your last chance to realistically do Stadium Stampede. Fucking do it. I'm I'm not disagreeing with you because I've actually came down from the blood and guts, and I think that that you needs to get pushed. Today, yeah. Um, but continue. Yeah, my second uh, my second card um, that I that I is the one that I'm all in on that I think could help fix everything that I feel like is going wrong. I'm gonna go in reverse order. I'm gonna start with the pre show pre show match. Joe Joe mentioned it, and he mentioned it in a way that I think makes perfect sense. I've gone back and forth on this. Finish what you've started. Yeah. My, pre, my pre-show match would be the tag team of the Lucha Bros taking on the team of QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes. Now, finish what you've started. I don't know how far before Brandy's set to have the baby. So what I would technically do is I would have it be Cody versus Penta set up for the show. A week or two before the show, I would have him get hurt. I would have Dustin come out and defend his brother's honor. I would have QT try to show up late to the party like he did a, a, on the angle on the show. And that be where QT eventually and finally stabs Dustin in the back for good after they lose to the Lucha Bros. Because this is something where you're going to have an extended break in between shows from yeah. double or nothing to all in or all out. So you, you could have them feud for a couple weeks on Dynamite, have a big blow up there on maybe like a Beach Blast episode or something like that. Um, so I'm in on finish what you started on that perspective. Second up, first show of the main show, I have the Casino Battle Royale with the Battle Royal. Um, this one, though, I do not have Adam, pa- Adam Page winning because I have him in a match later in the night. Uh, I don't really care who wins this. I personally would probably pick Brian Cage. I would put Cage in, in a match with Kenny Omega because, you know, Kenny's a guy, he's the best bout machine, and Brian Cage is Mr. Get My Fucking Shit In. And, yeah. you know, Brian Cage deserves to, he's probably to have... probably face, too. And, and, and that's the thing. If he breaks away from Team Taz or Team Taz keeps him, you know, under contractual things, Taz cutting promos with Kenny Omega and Don Callis would be a lot of fun. And I think it could be a fun <coughs> little... Uh, again, you're going to have time after this show that you're going to have to fill. And mm-hmm. what better way to fill it than with guys that are really good in ring, and Brian Cage is one of them. Uh, my first title match that I want to discuss, Sheeta versus Jade again for the title. I, this one didn't change. Um, I still have Jade winning. Um, I'd love for it to be Britt Baker, but I don't know that right now is the time with Britt losing to Thunder Rosa. If she right. would have beaten Thunder Rosa, I would say that, yeah, this is Britt's launching pad and get the title to her at the show. But with her losing, I know it's seven weeks, but there's a lot of shit you got to try to fix within the next six to get it right. Yeah, can I just uh, say, too, it's really interesting that they ended up going in the direction of deciding to have Dunla Rosa win that match last night. Because I going get to NWA's it. NWA's reopening. Right. Well, it like, I, I get it in a way because, yeah, you're, you're leaving the door open for match number three because I think we're right about that they've fought now twice and that Brittany won the first one. So you're, you're leaving that door open. But right, like, at the end of the day, the woman who won that match isn't actually even on your roster. Unless Brits go into NWA to beat her on her home turf. I mean, like, it, right. Like, I don't know where that's going. I'm, I'm interested in ordering the NWA pay-per-view this coming weekend. Thunder Rose is on that. Maybe Britt Baker shows up there or something. That'd be really Poss- cool. That'd be, a, that'd be a cool little way to involve AEW in that pay-per-view without it mm-hmm. being... Kenny Omega showing up somewhere, you know? Yeah, and I don't think you need Kenny on this one for it to no, make sense. Uh, the first of multiple multi-man tag team matches. Uh, we love it. We love it here. Uh, first up, Team No Money Matt. Matt Hardy's new uh, assembly line of fun and misfit toys. Uh, the Butcher, the Blade, the Candlestick Maker, uh, the Bunny, the Leprechaun, and whatever else I could find in their fucking trunk come with... Uh, Private Party and Matt Hardy to take on the Dark Order. Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, Banna, Ten, and their associate, Adam Hangman Page. Finish what you started. Dark Order the win. Get Page away from Matt Hardy. Let's move on. Yeah. Decisive. Let him go out there. Let him hit cowboy shit. Let him fucking take Matt out with the fucking buckshot, and let's just get over it. It gets the Dark Order on the show. 
who has become one of the most overacts in the entire fucking company, and they've yeah. come a long way to get to that point. Side note, if you listen to the AEW podcast with Aubrey and Shivani, their guests this week were Uno and Grayson. Great episode. I listened to it today while I was waiting for Jackson Therapy to be over. Fantastic episode. Those guys are awesome. Um, I love the fact that Stu goes, if, if it wasn't for uh, wrestling, I wouldn't have social media. <laughs> he's, like, I hate, he's, like, he's like, I don't think I'd even have internet. I hate the internet. It's so, amazing. So I, I just I, – those guys are awesome. I love those guys. Uh, we met them a couple times on the indies, and those guys have always been great to their fans. So anytime that I can give uh, Uno and Dos some love, I, I always do. They actually go into the backstory of the numbers too. Oh, really? Yeah, it's actually pretty fun. They, they said they had somebody who was number five and number six, and uh, six they kicked out and five – oh, no, six has been reserved for X-Pac whenever he decides that he wants to join yes. the Dark Order. And f- and five has been kicked out of it because he either quit wrestling or sucked or something was was what they said. I don't remember the exact line, but that was pretty good. It annoys me that Stu doesn't go by Dose, especially because he has gone by Dose before, but he's not going well, he's, by Dose here. He he says that's his number, right? Jo- uh, Brody Lee Junior's negative one. Brody was zero, right? U- Uno's Uno. Stu is Dose. Uh, three is Reynolds, four is Silver. Okay. Five they kicked out, six is X-Pac whenever he wants to join. Or uh, it'll be reserved for Adam Hangman Page because it's a gun reference. Okay. Six shooter. Yeah. Uh, seven, I don't, I think seven was, or no, five, five is five at Alan, Alan Angels. Okay. Six was reserved for Paige. Seven, I don't remember. Or seven and eight were the two that got kicked out. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then, of course, Anna's 99. Right. And Mike Vance is 10. Or Preston Vance. All right. Back to my card. I have a triple threat tag team title match set up. And it sprinkled in a little bit of what happened on Dynamite. And I didn't surprise that neither one of you picked up on the fun here. Give me the Young Bucks, the World Tag Team Champions, defending their titles against the former Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, and the tag team of Kenny... No, just kidding. John Moxley and the War King, Eddie Kingston, the Drinking Buddies. Remember, the Young Bucks stopped the Good Brothers from stomping on the leg inside the chair. Okay, next week, Eddie and, and, and John try to go do the same thing to, to Carl Anderson. One of them meets a super kick. Right. What side are the Young Bucks on? Are they the executive vice president of the company? Or are they friends with that the Good Brothers? My, my watch, my, my watch I like that. I like you that get, a lot. I, I think it works from the perspective of you have six guys in that ring that can work their ass off. Right. And after a show where the wrestling wasn't as crisp as it should have been, this is a show where the wrestling has to be almost perfect. And I think that these six guys in ring together are absolutely perfect for each other. Anderson and Gallows, arguably the best tag team in the world whenever they came to WWE. They can still go in the ring. You have Matt and Nick Jackson, arguably the greatest tag team in the world right now. And honestly, Moxley, Renee's going to have the kids sometime soon. Yeah. You get him in that match. You maybe have an injury angle after that match where he goes away for a couple months. Kind of the Cody situation where he could go away for a couple months too, and everybody's living fucking perfect harmony. Uh, next up, Fatal four-way for the TNT title. Darby Allen, the champion, defends against Lance Archer, Scorpio Sky. I have another member of Team Taz as my selection, and the guy that I think should leave as a champion, absolute Ricky Starks. I like it. Ricky Starks. I like it. I like that. I love love Ricky Starks. I liked him whenever he was in NWA when we watched Power. I remember telling you I loved him when he was on Power, and he was playing like a tweener role there. I am all in on the and great promo role. too. I am all in on the heel, absolute Ricky Starks. Yeah, I think he's great. Star for that company. Uh, and finally, I'm sorry. Co-main event, the Stadium Stampede two. Joe Joe beat me to it. I went from Blood and Guts to the Pinnacle versus the Inner Circle and Blood in in right. Stadium Stampede, saving um, the inevitable Blood and Guts between the two of them. And finally, my main event of the evening. I've gone on a little bit of a retreat here. I am putting Kenny Omega defending the AEW world title on this show. Okay. He, he is going to defend against Christian. I mean, it makes sense. I wouldn't even be mad at it if it becomes a thing. 
Because we, we the whole thing was finish what you started. And yeah. I, 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 that's kind of the approach I took with this. I, I did. I, I, on my rant, I said that they, he didn't need to defend the title. And Kenny doesn't need to defend the title here. Right. The storytelling getting the Young Bucks involved, though, made it feel like the six-man tag match was just going to be a thing that it made more sense to have the three teams fight each other. Yeah. So that, leaves, that leaves Kenny on a fucking deserted island. So what's the safest route that you can go? One of the better in-ring wrestlers, when healthy, and I think Christian is healthy, Yeah. that you have available to you. Um, and it's a guy who can go get a three, four, maybe even a potential four and a half star match out of Kenny Omega, given the right time, given the right amount of build and no stupid ass fucking gimmicks. Give me the best bout machine versus one of the best wrestlers to ever come out of Canada. Let me have those guys go have a 15 to 25 minute match. That's a wrestling match. I don't need barbed wire. I don't need right. chairs. I don't need anything. I need Kenny Omega with a one wing angel. I need Christian with whatever the fuck he's going to call the unprettier. If he's still going to call it that cool story, bro. I don't care. Right. Okay. Give, give me what makes sense though. And what makes sense is finishing what you started, which is the whole thing that me and Joe both have been key on, on this as a whole. I just, because the stop and goes is what's going to drive yeah. everybody nuts. Right. I'll just, I'll just say, I mean, I, I don't think I, you're done with your card, right? Yep, yep, that's I all. Was, of it. I, I actually a fan of a lot of that card. I thought that sounded really good. I like actually that was my favorite out of all the ones we put out <laughs> here. To be honest, um, I just I'll say this just to kind of close up the topic, and then we can move on to Mike's topic. We said it last week. We said very clearly that like, look, AEW needs to kind of really, it needs to come together now. The next Get seven shit together. This is this week. Right, the, the build-up to Double or Nothing, it needs to be there. That card needs to be there. That show needs to, for us, like, obviously, I know people who enjoyed that show. Great for them. They're still going to be fans no matter what. They're happy. They're satisfied. For me, and the way you guys have expressed it, we've been really disappointed with AEW. We've really not, like, this show is not a huge fans of what's been going on. And, and, and Revolution was kind of a, like, you know, like a, line in the sand kind of thing, you know, where it was like, okay, I, I it can't keep going down from here. And we were, we kind of took a hard stance and said, look, next seven weeks, let's see how they're doing. I just want to say after week one, I, they, they, I'm giving them a, I'm giving them a thumbs up, you know, mm -hmm. like we're grading week by week. Like I'm giving them an A plus right now for where they're at from week one. Cause I feel like the last two weeks they've taken the absolute, to me, like, I wasn't a fan at all of Revolution. Like I said, it wasn't just, it wasn't just, oh, the bomb didn't go off at the end of the last match. Like, I thought the last match was great up, other than the ending. But every other match on that card, I was not that into. I was not a big fan of. It was like I, it was like I told you guys earlier, and I tweeted this earlier on Twitter as well, as well. Last night's Dynamite as a whole, not just the yeah. first match and all that. It felt like a possible inflection point for this company. Yes. Like, I think I think they got it. I think at the revolution and, they got it. And the week before too, if we're being honest. Like literally, like the last two weeks worth of dynamites to me have been dumb right. up shows. Have me excited to see what's gonna happen next. Like, and the, I can't wait right. to watch dynamite next week. And I'm the not part, dark and, and I'm not watching elevation. But I can't wait to watch dynamite next week. Right, me too. And the weird part is like every storyline that was featured last night. I'm invested into even the even the Miro Kip Sabian thing. You started right. to see cracks in your arm a little bit there, so right. maybe there's fun to move Miro. I love I love the fact that none of us put that on their show. By the way, I love the fact that all of us stayed the fuck away from that. I appreciate that so fucking much. That could be <laughs> that could be handled on Dynamite, honestly. You have yeah, seven I, weeks. If that if that was, thing gets dragged out to the fucking pay per view, I'm going to throw something. I was going <laughs> to I was going to try to book my. Uh, AEW Dark pre-show 17 match card, but I didn't have time to do we're that. Doing so. that shit. All right, let's get to the final card because we're gonna go two hours again this week for the third week in a row. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, we we tailed off on the fast lane talk. One hour, hour and thirty in right now, and we're going to our third topic. I don't, think, so. I don't think I, I don't think this third topic is gonna be too too long. Okay. Um, all right, Bracketology. You guys were here last week. We determined that the four teams that would move on were the Outsiders and RVD and Sabu from the North. The South was Demolition and the Eliminators. Uh, it's time to play Bracket Challenge. Uh, the second set of four matches in the uh, Bracket Elimination style. Again, 
Two votes moves you on. If it goes to a tiebreaker, we'll figure it out from there. Uh, Ernest, by the way, after the call, whenever we're done recording, I want to talk to you about something. So stay on video. Joe, you can stay too if you want. I don't care. I just wanted to say that before we got too far. Uh, all right. We'll start in the south because I have that built up already on my iPad. Uh, it is the 413 matchup. It is the former WWE Tag Team Champions, Paul London and Brian Kendrick, Ooh. taking on from ECW the impact players of Just Incredible and Lance Storm. Uh, some notes on both teams before we get to the voting here. Brian Kendrick and Paul London were two-time tag team champions in WWE. They had a 331-day reign as the SmackDown tag team champions. At the time, I believe, the longest reign. Um, or like in like how, since Demolition, I think, right? Probably. Demolition went uh, about a good hour and three months. Oh, oh, one year and three months, so yeah. 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 Sounds accurate. Uh, and then uh, they had a three-day reign as the Raw Tag Team Champions. Not as good the second time around. Uh, and then for the Impact players, two-time ECW Tag Team Champions for a total of 89 days. Um, I will say this. I'm one of the bigger fans of what Credible and Storm did in ECW as a tag team. Um, I thought they were great in ring together. I thought they got great matches. Um, not just when they were champions, but, but before they were champions. You know, the stuff with Tommy Dreamer and uh, Raven and then Mike Awesome, you know, Masato Tanaka, you know, that that, where they won the titles the second time in that three-team dance match. Uh, They they had good matches against, like, Chetty and Nova. Uh, Roadkill and Danny Doring, I think they had a couple of decent matches with right before the company closed. Um, But with that being said, I don't know that I can go against a a team that had a 331-day title reign and a company that hates tag team wrestling as much as WWE does. I think that London and Kendrick were a time where tag team wrestling didn't matter. And they had so much fun as a tag team that it made tag team wrestling on SmackDown so much more enjoyable than Raw. Because you knew that, okay, it's only going to be a four or five minute match, but it's going to be a fun four or five minute match. All right. Um, I'll vote. Um, so it's actually, this is kind of an easy one for me, if I'm being honest. And it's only because I wasn't that big into ECW in the late 90s. My time as an ECW fan was more 96, 97, that kind of period. By 98, 99, I had fallen off on ECW. So I really didn't actually see much of the Impact players run. I don't have a lot to actually judge them on. And the little bit that I do have to judge them on, like I'm going to be honest, right? I'm not the biggest Just Incredible fan. Um, I think Lance Storm is great, obviously, but, you know, I, I just, I don't have enough to judge them on. And at the same time, I'm a huge fan of London and Kendrick. I'm a huge fan of them as individuals. I'm obviously, as, as a long-term Ring of Honor fan, as someone who's been a Ring of Honor fan since day one, I, I'm very familiar with both London and Kendrick. They're basically, they were basically the best tag team to exist in NXT about a decade before NXT was a thing. You know, they, if they had existed right now, they would be literally one of the top teams on the planet. Yeah. So I just looked it up while you were talking because I had sure, a minute sure. to put my head down. Just Incredible and Lance Storm never lost the ECW tag titles the second time. Oh, they wow. Vacate, they vacated the titles, which were then won by Mikey Whipwreck and Yoshihiro Tajiri. But the interesting thing that I have here. I brought up the total amount of defenses that Brian Kendrick and Paul London had in 331 days. It's going to be small. You want to guess? Like eight. What? Ten. Ten. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not surprised that I bet like three of them were to do some domino. Because there were, like, the tag team wrestling when Brian Kendrick and Paul London were a team in WWE, if I'm being honest. And I might be, right now, making the case for why neither one of you guys should vote for them. And I, that, God, this hurts. This hurts my soul. I, but let's be I honest. Just want, right, like, they were, they were the matches. top tag team when tag team wrestling kind of sucked in WWE. I want to read you off Brian and Kendrick and Paul London's title matches. Sure, they go won for it. They won the titles from Eminem, Mercury, and Nitro. Probably a really good feud. I, I actually probably enjoyed that. 
They defended the title against the Mexicals of Psychosis and Super Crazy. Okay. They, they defeated the new pit bulls of Jamie Noble and Kid Cash, not the ones that we had on in, in right. our boat uh, earlier. Um, they had a triple threat match on an episode of SmackDown that went five minutes where they defeated Idol Stevens and KC James and the Pitbulls. Uh, they defeated Idol Stevens and KC James at a No Mercy card in 06. They had a four-way ladder match where they defeated Eminem, Dave Taylor, and William Regal and the Hardy Boys. That's the match where Joey Mercury's face got fucked up. Armageddon 2006. That's uh, where his face gets exploded. Yeah. Uh, they then defeated Dave Taylor and William Regal in a sing- in a in a one on a one team match. They had a match against Deuce and Domino that they won. They defeated Deuce. Uh, excuse me, they defeated Eminem. They defeated Deuce and Domino and then lost to Deuce and Domino. Yeah. Like I said, like look, there's no denying tag team wrestling was not exactly at its greatest pinnacle at the time that those guys are champions. I'm voting for them because, like I said, I just don't know the Impact players that well. And I love Brian and Kendrick as a team. They were my nominees. I'm voting for them. I'm not going to be mad if you guys don't vote for them. So it's, up, it's on Well, you. Mike, you voted for uh, Kendrick and uh, London. No, no. No, he didn't vote. He, he I, never, didn't. I never made a, I never made yeah. a vote. I'm going to side with Joe also, too, because I think, if anything, like I know who Lance Storm and Dustin Scribble is, but the tiebreaker here for me is the stats, honestly. And then if, and if, and if you're, you know, the best one and it didn't matter, you know, I got to kind of for something. It's hard to be a tag team when Vince doesn't give a shit and you're having fun with it, whatever. Don't know much about really honestly, but I'll go can with that. Just, as well. Can I just point out one thing, though, now to defend the Brian Kendrick? And I guess, I mean, they've, they've won at this point. Yeah. But yep. the, they'll have to win further rounds. I'd love to see them make a run. So I'm going to just put one thing out there for you guys, okay? I know it sounds like a real small amount. In 300 and something, 331 days, they only defended the title 10 times. But if the rules state that you only have to defend the title once every 30 days, and they held the titles for almost a year, they it's basically ballpark. defended it about once every 30 that's days. Ballpark. Right, like that's actually kind of a successful title reign, I'm just saying. I totally agree. And again, it's always uh, a demolition. Demolition held the title for, for like 17 months. Straight. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you this much. I don't think there's a shot in hell they're winning the next matchup, so it really doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Well, good. Because my my vote would have been for the Impact players. Uh, we don't have to wait very long though, because we're going right to whoever they're going to face next. It is the five twelve matchup in the South. It is the five seed, the Nasty Boys, Sags and Knobs versus the Bushwhackers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry if Brian Kendrick and Paul London lose to either the Nasty Boys or the Bushwhackers, I'm going to be pissed. How? Wow. Because they're a better fucking team than either of those teams ever were. Nasty Boys, though, I, I, I will say this. You know, at the time, they made it. hot trash as wrestlers. At, at the sorry. time, they made their run. Um, they were a good 91. act. They were a good act. They were fun characters. They were perfect for where they were at the times that they were there. Like, they were in WWF at the time when that that was the character that would get you over. They were in WCW a few years later when that was the thing that would get you over. Like, if the Nasty Boys had showed up for the first time in 1999, they wouldn't have been a fucking success. Yeah, the Tax 89 was fucking dominant, dude. Right, like, you know Tom, what I'm saying? Like, even as an like, they they sucked in the ring. Like, I'm sorry. No, they were great. No, I I I I, I can I can agree with you there. But yeah, I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be that guy because I know they're not gonna win this. So I'll be the one guy to avoid the sweep. I'll pick the Bushwhackers just because. I, I was gonna say knowing like, knowing that the Nasty Boys did win the tag titles of WrestleMania seven for the record. As much shit as I'm talking about the Nasty Boys, I don't think I'm gonna sit here and vote for the Bushwhackers. I was gonna say. I was going to say, if you literally just swung vote so it wasn't a sweep and you picked the fucking Bushwhackers, and we got a team that held the fucking uh, WWE titles for 155 days with like 12 defenses, and the team that held the WCW tag title that had like 11 defenses for 200 days, you're both fucking fired from bracketology. There's no way the fucking Bushwhackers should beat the fucking Nasty Boys. <laughs> no, I, I agree. No, I, I'm assuming. Wait, 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 wait. I'm assuming you're both picking the Nasty Boys. That's all. I mean, look. Does the Bushwhackers the were... also count the sheep herders? Sure. Wait, 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 Joe. Who are you choosing here? 
I mean, I'm, I'm choosing the nasty boys. Okay. But to be fair, if you were also counting the Sheep Herders, they are more of a legendary tag team. Like, they do deserve that credit. But... I like. I mean, I'm not voting for the Bushwhackers. The fucking Bushwhackers. Even when I was a kid, I wasn't a fan of the Bushwhackers. The, the, so they were comic relief, man. It's, it's, na- it's nasty boys. They suck dude. as wrestlers. Let's be. It's, it's nasty boys, dude. That's boys. Hey, come on. I mean, the Bushwhackers is fun. Nasty boys won the titles. It's hard for our nation. So let's go. Bush- Clean sweep. The let's nasty go. Nasty boys got to where they were because fucking Hulk Hogan's like their BFF. Yeah, I agree. Well, we're gonna have a fun debate because I think the Nasty Boys versus London and Kendrick is a lot closer than what you think it really is going to be. But we'll have a couple of weeks before we get there. I, I'm okay. going to send Ernest like a fucking fruit basket so he votes for London and Kenny. I was going to say, I, was I gonna might say, do what that. Do I hate Nasty Boys. So I, I might do say, that. What do you do? Send, what do you do? Send him their three matches that went longer than five minutes and see if fucking he can no, enjoy those I'm more? No, bribery. I'm bribing him, not trying to get him to watch wrestling he's not going to watch. Is, that, is it Roy Rumble, tw- uh, Roy Rumble 2020? Right? Like, no. <laughs> they, no, they, no sale, motherfucker. <laughs> Like, did they wrestle? <laughs> did they wrestle Brock Lesnar? Then he's not interested. Thirteen match. Then he's no. not interested. Exactly. Where's S.A. Rios at? We need him. We bring him back. Who? All right. We're gonna go to the north now because you just told me who. Whenever I mentioned S.A. Rios, who is like the greatest Sunday Night Heat wrestler of all time. What the fuck is wrong with you? Many things. <laughs> I, I got him to fucking snort on that one. That was great. Awesome. All right. The North region will start the 314 matchup. The three seed, Rick and Scott, the Steiner brothers, their opponents for this one, who's already had one of his teams, I believe, eliminated. Yep, he was eliminated last week. That is Ron Simmons. His tag team partner this week is Butch Reed. It is. The- uh, for longevity tough. alone, I'm voting for this. This is Steiner. tough. This is tough. Because I- I'll tell you what. The Steiner brothers, as we as we go years beyond their peak, they become so underrated. They really do. What What do you mean by that? Because I don't feel like they're. To me, that would mean that they're like almost forgotten, and I don't agree with that. I feel they get like forgotten they- because you think tag teams like there's so many probably more popular tag teams. You know, I think of the Steiner brothers when I think of that. It's one of the reasons why like this is an easy one for me, actually. Like if, if you ask me to name if you just walked up to me and were just like name five wrestling tag teams of all time, go. Steiner Brothers is probably one of the five that's coming to my head. Well for um, well, well, you and I are also diehard wrestling fans, especially in that era. Dylon, 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 because I spit hot. Fire. I mean, for me to me the answer is easy. It's Steiner Brothers. It's easy for me. Okay. Yeah, no, I I think this is a clean sweep here. Uh, I'm definitely with the Steiner brothers. And I'm going to go fuck, full fuck spoiler alert here. I have a real fucking feeling that they're going to be in the team that's going to be fight, facing off with maybe uh, the winner of the top half of the North in the I final agree four. I, I agree. Um, because this looking at their statistical numbers, two-time IWGP tag champs, six-time WCW tag champs, uh, world tag team champions uh, on in WWE twice, um, they got a lot of history on their side, and there's not a lot of guys that can compete with them coming out of the bottom half of that north bracket. Um, so it's a queen sweep for the Steiner brothers. Uh, no real uh, question there. Even though the Steiner brothers and Doom had a really good match, though. Hmm. Yeah, they did. 91? 90, 91? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll find Hold it. Somewhere. I'll find it. No, you won't. It won't be up. It'll be, well, be right well now. It'll be up. It'll be up with all the other uh, Saturday night's main events. The ten. Jesus. All right. Let me get this uh, last portion here. Uh, if I can bring up the tag teams in the database here. All right. The final first round or the final uh, that we're going to go over tonight. Um, it is the six eleven matchup from the north. It is the six seed British Bulldogs. Their opponents this week are none other than. The Wyatt family slash Bludgeon Brothers of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. I wasn't paying. Wanna... What was that? No, it's the Wyatt brothers. It's the Wyatt. It's the Wyatt family versus the uh, tag team of the British Bulldogs. Oh, um... I mean. Oh, that can go either way. That's a. That's uh. A... Oh, I found the match. The the Doom match? 
Yeah, I found two matches actually of theirs from '89 and from '91. Classic champion. All right, so before, Havoc. Um, all right, so this is actually before, easy for me. Before, to be honest, before we go, oh, it is okay. I'll let you go, and then yeah, I was going to go with some statisticals. Well, go ahead, go ahead, no, no, run it out, run, run the numbers out before we go. All right, statisticals. Uh, the tag team of the Bludgeon Brothers of Harper and Rowan. They had that one title reign on the SmackDown brand where they were champions for 135 days. They also held the NXT tag titles for 49 days. Mm -hmm. Um, The British Bulldogs, they were Stampede International Tag Team Champions twice, uh, and the WWF World Tag Team Champions uh, one time for 294 days. Yeah. It's a good reign to have, 86-87. It was a good reign, actually. I know. The Bulldogs were fantastic. I mean, Mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest, yeah, I'm gonna vote for the Wyatt family. You know, I, you know, I, <laughs> I look at Mike fucking said that. You know, so it's funny. I just love how he was like, "Oh yeah, the British Bulldogs are great in Yeah, I'm voting for the Wyatt family. No, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as Joe though. I just love uh, how he slow rolled everyone. Everyone at home right I now. I think. Like, oh, he's slow rolled. What question? What question? This is gonna be great. <laughs> nope. How <laughs> long were they together? The Bulldogs the, the or the Brothers. Uh, they started as a tag team. They won the NXT tag team titles in 2013. Okay, and then they were a tag team through what? 16 at least? 12, 12 through 19. The Bludgeon Brothers really broke up when Harper got released. Okay, so they're, they're, I'll pick them also too by virtual look, I'm gonna say I'm going to say this, right? They were enough of a tied together act that when Eric Rowan finally got released by WWE, everyone was like, oh, you know he's showing up in AEW. You know he's joining the Dark Order. It was expected. It didn't happen. He only appeared for the um, the after memorial. Died, the memorial show. But everyone expected it. That's how tied together they are. That's how synonymous they are. I don't think you can say that quite the same about Davey Boy and uh, Dynamite Kid. Yep. Like, maybe maybe towards Dynamite Kid, like, yeah, he's synonymous with the British Bulldogs, but Davey Boy had a pretty successful career as a singles guy. Oh, no, no, no. Not um, that. But for me, I think I'll get as much brothers here on one, one, one big reason, longevity. Bulldogs had a nice little run in 86, a little bit 87, and by 88, they were on the way out. Like, I, a lot of had to do with injury with well, Dynamite Kid, but by the time Demolition came in there... The hearts were getting push heavy, all the rockers, all that. The Bulldogs just kept going out of sight, out of mind. Right. The last match I remember seeing them was at SummerSlam 88, and they lost, I believe. So other than the 86, 87 run, that's all I really have. And granted, they were big. They were like they were very popular. But it just as fast as they were popular, they were gone within two years. So the, longevity. The that. last tag team match that the British Bulldogs had together on WWE television was the Survivor Series Elimination Ten Man Tag Match. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then they were. Uh, I think they were released shortly after because they showed up on the uh, December second episode of Stampede Wrestling. Um, they wrestled for Stampede until. March of 89 and then had a run in all Japan pro wrestling where they were part of the real world tag league. They had other matches. Their final match as a tag team together was the two of them and tiger mask versus jumbo. Tsuruta, Masunubi Fuchi and Yoshihaki Yatsu. Hmm. Say that, say that three times. Uh, can, I, can I get that? I with, can I get that with cream of some young guy? Yes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my vote would have been for the uh, Wyatt family slash Bludgeon yeah. Brothers also. Um, Sweet. I just, I, I, think, I think those guys work so well together. Uh, now, to make this uh, faster for you guys, um, next week, uh, my topic again will be the, the brackets. We're going to finish the first round next week. We're going to do eight, all eight matchups. Um, because it, we're going to get into some matchups that are going to be very easy, and we're not going to have to go into too much deep dive discussion. And like we can it. get onto the matchups that really are going to matter, which are going to be the second, third, and then of course the uh, final four. Um, so that's uh, that's the tag bracket for this week. The bottom half of the North 
Steiner Brothers versus Wyatt Family, uh, Outsiders versus RVD and Sabu. One of those teams is going to have a shot to fucking play for the winner, uh, to play for the North. Uh, the South bracket, a little bit different. London and Kendrick and the Nasty Boys are in the bottom of the top bracket. And then you have Demolition and the Eliminators in the top half of the bottom half of that bracket. Um, so you might actually see where those teams could end up facing each other uh, in the finals of the South. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, so that is the, the March Madness portion of the Take 3 Wrestling podcast for this week. Uh, I guess we're going to go to Joe for the I love it for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you love this week? Portion of the show. Ah, great. My favorite part of the show. Yeah. All right. So, Tony Khan. I love this for you. All right, Tony Khan. I was watching AEW TV this week. I saw you out there living out your Mr. McMahon fantasies, living out your sleazy fantasies. All those times you watched Raw and Nitro and you were just like, ah, oh, I want to be the dork in charge. There you were, dude, dressed like an extra from an episode of HBO Silicon Valley. We really got to work on that. You need some gay friends. Sunny Kiss. Stop letting Tony Khan walk out on TV looking like that, okay? Like, from, from one gay man to another, that's not okay. Honey, no, all right? But Tony Khan, you're living out your dreams, and I love that for you. That's good. All right, MVPs, we get out of here. Uh, I'll go first. My MVPs, it's two people, two women. What a fucking banger last night. Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa. Uh, right now, early match of the year candidate for me. So, uh, my MVP is also a woman, and she's also an AEW. I'm giving mine to Big Swole because I'm really happy to see her back. Like I, I'm a Swole fan, you know that. She's had a lot of a hard oh. time with health, and she has oh. been out of the ring for a hot minute. She's back. She was in action on Elevation. She got a win. She's gonna be at the top of that division before you know it. Swole. Swole. Every time you say that, I'm going to just One of the worst theme songs in the fucking company, by the way. Yeah, just do it. Just say it. Just say it. Say what? Swole. 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 Oh, I really don't know if I want to give it to. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. We'll give it to uh, the feud of that's going to be the blow up of NXT, the Adam Cole Kyle O'Reilly shenanigans that included the both of them getting arrested for a car accident that may or may not have happened in the extremely time. dangerous NXT parking lot. They got to get better security there. I'm afraid someone's going to die. We had guys getting smuggled like uh, Joaquin Phoenix's illegitimate love child. And Raul Mendoza by Santos Escobar. We got uh, uh, a got his arm broken in there. I mean, there's got to be some serious issues at Full Sail. This is why no, 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 see, they're not at Full. This is why they need to move back to Full Sail. It was safe out there. They just had food. Trucks. Better security. Better security. Yeah. Yep. Better absolutely. security and like, and if you somehow got past the security guards, you weren't getting past the half price chorizos. No, you really weren't because those were fantastic. So good. Yeah, yeah I need to watch NXT no. last night. But yeah, no. Uh, yeah, me neither. I was, yeah. I, I was gonna make my MVP the parking lot, but I just didn't want to like be <laughs> morbid, so I chose to go with the few that happened in the parking lot. All right, fellas, first night on new night Thursday nights. So I'm gonna be so fucked up tomorrow. I'm gonna think it's why? Sunday like all day. He's gonna think it's Monday because we normally record, or no, he's yeah. gonna think it's Sunday because we've been recording on yeah. Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. But I like Thursday. Uh, Joe, Thursday's nice. I like. Thursday. I did too. It's felt good. Really good, Joe, we're gonna so. have to we're gonna have to set our alarm so we can swarm the WrestleMania. Oh shit, that's a thing. I forgot. <laughs> yep. Well, once once Ernest stops recording, we'll we'll come up with the game plan before we hang up. Absolutely. So for Mike, for Joe, I'm Ernest Christian. We're gonna be back to you next week. Toronto uh, is stay awesome. up. Later. Bye. Peace up, A Town Down.